Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwad. Thank you for watching my channel. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down below and right next to it is the bell notification. When you click that and I upload videos, you'll be first to be notified through your email. If you're watching on Facebook, thank you very much. I always appreciate a bigger audience. If you like the material, hit the like button. If you think it's beneficial, share with a friend, share on your page or show to somebody who thinks that they could benefit from vitamin K2. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment down below. I always read the comments. I always answer the questions. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is, this is Dr. Juwan. The short video, I'm gonna answer a question and that is, what is the benefit of vitamin K2? How does it differ from vitamin K1? because I have emails that say that my patients, they go to their primary doc saying that they're on vitamin K supplement and the doc freaks out at them saying, hey, stop it, you're gonna, you're gonna bleed to death. Now again, this is the difference between different, uh, different knowledges and wisdoms of medical pra practitioners. Now, vitamin K1 is involved in blood clotting. We need vitamin K1 to help clot the blood. But vitamin K2, What's a function of vitamin K2? It decreases the calcium buildup in the tissue. Now we need vitamin D3 to help absorb the calcium into the bloodstream. However, if we don't have a sufficient amount of vitamin K2, where does the calcium go? It goes, it builds up in the tissue. It'll calcify the artery, it'll calcify the brain, it'll deposit in the kidneys. Okay, you'll get decreased bone density. Okay, because also it's important to help decrease heart disease. Because if you build, if you take away that calcium buildup in the heart, especially those small arterioles, okay, it's going to help the heart. Now the question is, how do you get deficient in vitamin K2? There's many different ways. One, antiacids. Antiacids block the absorption of vitamin K2. Remember, K vitamin K2 is a fat-soluble vitamin, so you need sufficient amounts of stomach acid as well as bile to help break down the fat in the small intestines because the fat-soluble vitamins are vitamins A, D, E, and K. Antibiotics, antibiotics will wipe out the bacterial bed to clean. So again, you're gonna, you're gonna get malabsorption. GI problems, statins, cholesterol medications. We need cholesterol and bile to help break down the fat-soluble vitamins. Menopause, pregnancies, these are, our, these are this is just a handful of why you may become deficient in vitamin K2. Now remember, vitamin K2 ha is, the main thing about vitamin K2, it decreases the calcium buildup in the arteries and helps deposit it in the bone. So there's many different benefits. Number one, heart disease. Now the blood vessels, they have three K-dependent proteins, okay? And this is the matrix GLA protein, GAS6 protein, and protein S. Those are three main Cals, I'm sorry, vitamin K dependent proteins. Those proteins need vitamin K. So what happens, it prevents calcification, decreases inflammation. So this is where K2 is important to help reduce heart disease. Okay, bone health. We have what's vitamin K dependent, it's called osteocalcin. And osteo, the function of osteo, osteocalcin, it binds calcium to deposit in bone. So MGP, those, again, the matrix GLA protein, which is cal uh, vitamin K dependent, limits the size of the calcium phosphate. Now, calcium phosphate is one of those main ingredients to build bone. Crystals to properly fill, fit into the bone matrix. So you need vitamin K2, again, to increase bone density. And also, too, if you're deficient in vitamin K2, this is where you're gonna increase, I'm sorry, you're gonna decrease the bone density. Kidney health, okay, K2, it's used to activate, again, here's this protein, the matrix Again, the matrix GLA protein, MGP, MGP, to remove the calcium. Why? Because that protein, the, the protein is vitamin K dependent, which will help, okay, limit the size of the calcium phosphate. So again, this will reduce the chances of the kidney stones building up in your kidney. Brain health. Now, vitamin K2, most of it's found in the brain. Now the brain is 80% fatty tissue. I always say that this, the body consists of two main ingredients, essential proteins and essential fatty acids. Your brain is about 80% fat. 
And most of that K2 is found in the brain. This is important because K2 is specifically concentrated to be higher in the myelin sheath. Now again, the myelin, we have, we have these wires and they're covered with what's called myelin. And the myelin helps with the nerve communicate, nerve communication. So the thicker the myelin, the greater the myelination, the better communication there is, whether it be your brain, whether it be your nerves and so forth and so on. So again, it's specifically concentrated to be higher in the myelin regions. So it also correlates with the lipids in the brain. Now in lipids in the brain, they're called sulfatides. Okay, and the decline of both will reduce, again, will actually contribute to age-related neuro, neurological disorders. So yes, so we need vitamin K2, which is a fat-soluble vitamin, and we do need essential fatty acids. Those are the two main ingredients which help with the brain function. Insulin sensitivity. Again, there's a lot of things that will contribute to insulin sensitivity. Vitamin K, okay, so when the bone is reabsorbed, so when the bone is reabsorbed, the osteocalcin, osteocalcin is important for bone health, okay, is released into the serum. So then what happens, it acts like a hormone to improve insulin sensitivity and, and to also control blood glucose. So you can see how vitamin K2 is just not for, for bone health. It's for, again, for, to reduce heart disease, for kidney health, brain health, insulin sensitivity. Now, vitamin K2 is a fat-soluble vitamin, so you need it to take it with a fatty substance for better absorption in the small intestines. Or foods. NATO. It ha NATO has the most vitamin K2 in it. Goose liver. Egg yolks. There was a big fallacy back in the days where the egg yolks are bad for you. No, egg yolks are good for you. That's where all the nutrients are. Grass-fed beef. Butter. Grass-fed butter. I did a video before is from Kerrygold butter or cultured butter loaded with vitamin K2. If you don't have access to all the foods or again, get sufficient amounts of vitamin K2, also you can take a supplement. Now to do a maintenance dose, a maintenance dose, I always recommend 100 micrograms a day or a therapeutic dose. A therapeutic dose I recommend for the first couple weeks just so the K2 gets in your system. And you want to couple that up with vitamin D3. So the maintenance dose of K2, you're gonna do 100 micrograms coupled with 10,000 international units of vitamin D3. The therapeutic dose, you're gonna do 400 micrograms of vitamin K2 and you're gonna double that up with 20,000 IUs of vitamin D3. So K, you can see K2 has phenomenal benefits to the overall body, okay? If you like the video, please share it with a friend. If you have any questions, please Type them down below. I, I answer all my questions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.